what is up, Burn Your Boats family? We are back here for That's What You Get Wednesdays. So, this Wednesday, today, we are going to talk about confirmation bias. Yeah. Some of you may already know what this is and may be already be familiar with it. There's several types of biases that we, we deal with as people um, and mentally when we're processing information or when we're just dealing with things natu- naturally throughout the day. If you've listened to a lot of the interviews that I've had with some of these amazing entrepreneurs and business owners and leaders, um, we will talk about negativity bias and how that can impact you. And I'll probably do another, another show on, on one of those on that um coming up here to give that some specific attention and 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 some the care that it needs for all y'all um but this is the so the confirmation bias is when you are seeking out information so we'll give an example um uh this comes into play that i learned about this when i was getting really into politics and so for if if you're thinking about a particular argument or a particular line of thought and let's say what's super controversial uh vaccines i guess it's not even super controversial but vaccines right so um you got your anti-vaxxers you got your pro-vaxxers um let's say that i am it doesn't matter you pick a side pick whatever side that you are and and consider doing research on this topic and you're going out and you're looking um, for more information and when you're looking your confirmation bias is going to naturally have the articles and opinions that align with your preconceptions and where you're already at emotionally um, it's going to attract those. They're gonna. It's gonna be like magnets. They're gonna come and they're gonna. They're gonna stick onto you, and it's gonna be super easy. And and the thing is, your threshold for accepting that information is going to be significantly lower. If you see something that is already already like clicking, like yep, yep, I knew it. That's what I thought, and that's what I thought. I knew I had heard that somewhere. Now I have, and I've seen it there too. And that's another. That's another thing. Um, you're not as likely to pay attention to where this, what source it came from. And you're not as likely, you're just, your diligence with the information and, and where you're getting it and, and how it was formed and, and paying attention even down to the nitty gritty details of the way that particular, uh, polls were conducted to extract the information that got, um, that, that led into this and, and the way that, the different studies were done in and how deep are you going to go into figuring out how double blind testing works you know <laughs> for because you will when you go when you come across that uh that counterpoint that does not belong that goes contrary to where you are at mentally going into that um it's going to be you're going instead of it being magnetized those ideas being magnetized and you see when you see something that is counter to where you are at emotionally with the topic then it's good it's more like um like you're sprayed with like cooking grease and it's coming at you and it's hitting you and it's just sliding off just like teflon just whoop they ain't sticking to you um because it's not it's it's not in agreement it's not in alignment with where you're at so, um, why, why is this important and, and why are we talking about it? And it's, it's because if you're looking for growth and you're looking to change your life to be something greater than it is now, and you want to make sure that you're not passing up on opportunities or you're not, not even that you're passing them up, but like, you're not even seeing them because you're Tefloning because it doesn't, it's not showing up the way that you thought it was going to show up. And so, because you see it this way, and this is the right answer, and anything that's not that is gonna is gonna end up being on that Teflon non-alignment side of your existence, of your perception. So, what can you do to counter that? And a lot of this really comes down to 
being aware. And I know that's such a, I feel like such a cop out. I hate when people say, you have to be aware. This is really one of those things where your awareness is going to lead you to take different actions in the face of it. It's not to say that when you're reading something and it aligns with, with what you think that that's not okay. It's okay. That's cool. But don't disregard information that is counter to what your thoughts are. Embrace them. Um, and, and really take the time to dig in and to try to go at it with an open mind. And try to see it from the perspective of the person that wrote it in the sense that it's most likely that that person's not come, didn't write this article or didn't do this research study or didn't conduct this poll maliciously. Um, they it, Just because it doesn't align with the way that you think about something. So try to think about it from the perspective of a person who agrees with it. And just put on put on that like pretend cap, you know, and just be like, I'm gonna pretend to be a person that thinks that vaccines are bad or whatever the case is. Um, and so when I'm going into that, so that then you then you look at it that way. Um, and and also, it's important for you to realize the impacts of confirmation bias when it comes to other people. So. Um, if you are engaging in a conversation with somebody and you are that contrary piece of information, you're that contrary force in something that they are emotionally attached to, then it's going, your the way that you go about that conversation will be will dictate how firmly that person digs their heels in and fighting you or if their mind could possibly be opened up. Now, for me, I've had I've had a fair amount of success. I've had a fair amount of failures with this where I've just I I go in it into these conversations like like a hammer, ready to just strike down and uh, and come with all of the points and everything that I've all the research that I've done and just throw this in somebody's face. Um, in which case, even when you win, even if I won an argument, you lose because defeating somebody to the point where they can't respond, they don't, they no longer have an argument, does not mean that you're you're changing their mind, right? And that's that would be the goal is to have them actually see and understand and respect your opinion. Um, I really think, I, I heard this recently, this this kind of different tack and approach. Um, for me, what I always do is I just ask questions. I changed it instead of, instead of me bringing up my point, I would try to think about what, like just how do I ask questions to, to really understand what it is that they're coming from because there would be a lot of assumptions that are being made about, and again, this goes to the intent when we're talking about looking at that information online or whatever the case is when you're reading a book uh, you, and you're you're putting yourself in the position of the person who wrote it and you're putting on their mentality or you're you're trying on and you're trying to think through the way that they think through it it's the same thing um, you you want to ask questions in a way that is already in alignment with where they're at um, and it's not that you're agreeing, like I said, you're asking questions, but you're doing it from their perspective. Um, so it's, and then doing so and acknowledging that their concerns and their emotions are real and valid and that they matter, um, that, that helps to, to create that alignment instead of that contrary relationship. And once you gain that alignment, then you can start to shift, um, to maybe you you both agree that uh, that something is wrong that something something in the office needs to change or or whatever the case may be and they they think that uh, you they need to buy all this new equipment and you think that there's something else that you you, you can use other things and bring it in um, asking questions and, and getting alignment like yeah no this is this really is a mess and these desks really are broken down and we we need to get some different stuff in here. 
Um, I think it would be awesome for us to be able to have new debt, different different debts that are actually functional. Like, does that make sense? And they'd be like, yeah. And you work it that way. Um, and so that way you're all in alignment. They're like, okay, yeah, yeah, the office here is messed up. We agree. And it would be better if we had desks that worked and drawers that actually pulled out and locks that were functional. Um, and then you could work, you know, if you had extra desks in the back, then you work an angle of bringing those in instead of spending a bunch of money on new desks, then you could use that money for a different project or something. You know, this is all random examples, but to the point that understanding your confirmation bias and understanding other people's confirmation bias is crucial for your ability to not just survive anymore in the environment, in your day, in your life, but to thrive, to thrive in those personal relationships and to be able to actually get what you want and, and to make your life, the people around you life, your organization, your family and the community. And then, you know, through, uh, the fallout of each ripple effect moving out, then you have, you have those positive impacts and you eventually can change the world that way. And that is what you get on this Wednesday. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you coming back. I love you all so very much. And I look forward to seeing you. I know, so last Friday, we missed it. Um, I had a lot going on. I, I don't have an excuse, honestly, like I should. I, I listened and I prepped everything and I just, I did not get through and, and pull the trigger on getting the interview. And I was really excited about it. It's actually with Justin Redlinger um and his drummer and his band and also roommate uh logan and that uh justin was so such uh an important part of my life i've like i've said that i've lived like four or five different full people's lives already and i'm relatively young um but he was huge in a part of, of a transition from a very uh non-productive non-creative Part of my life into a much more open loving and expansive kind of mindset uh and it was it's just, i have so much gratitude for him and i get we got a chance to sit down for over an hour and to really hash out some things specifically about his band and music and what that means to him and and how he's overcome a lot of obstacles and how logan has overcome a lot of obstacles it was a great conversation i look forward to getting that getting that out to you guys this friday without fail Again, I love you. Thank you for always coming back. And I will see you all here on Friday.